this is the story, the fantastically true story, of Herbert A. Philbrick, who for nine frightening years did lead three lives. Average citizen, high-level member of the Communist Party, and counter-spy for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. For obvious reasons, the names, dates, and places have been changed, but the story is based on fact. The fear of sudden death is something that lurks in the mind of every counter-spy. In this week's story, the method of stealing a top-secret invention brings sudden death very close. Philbrick. Morning. The boss would like to see you in his office right away. Oh. Come in. Do you want to see me, Mr. Marshall? Yes, sir. Come in. Sit down. Sit down. How are you feeling? Fine. Fine. Never felt better. Why? Oh, nothing. Uh, Herb, our relationship isn't just an employer-employee sort of thing, is it? I mean to say, we're friends, aren't we? You're one of the best friends I ever had, Mr. Marshall. Good. Then I can ask you something without embarrassing either of us. Sure. What's on your mind, Herb? What's been troubling you lately? Troubling me? I don't understand. Well, I'm going to level with you. Your work's fallen way off. But the main thing is, I don't like to see a man with your future going to pieces. Well, maybe I'm just tired. I'll, I'll be all right. Been to see a doctor lately? Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, I took an insurance examination last week. Everything checked out fine. No money troubles? No. Well, maybe I'm wrong. But you've been acting as if you're worried, even frightened. Are you sure there's nothing worrying you, Herb? Excuse me. Yes? Yes, he's here. Just a minute. No, there's nothing worrying you, Philbrick. Nothing on your mind except the communist meetings that you've been attending almost nightly. Nothing worrying you except the continual fear that at any moment they'll discover that you're passing party information on to the FBI. Herb, I said it's for you. What? Oh. Thanks. Yes? I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Philbrick, but that order you placed with me is ready to be picked up. Well, I, uh... I stayed up most of the night uh, working. I wonder if I could take care of that later. I was up most of the night, too. I'll be expecting you here as soon as possible. All right. That was an account. He wants me to help him with a new campaign. I guess I better leave. Go ahead. Now, by the way, how would you like to take a couple of days off and go fishing with me? I could get away tomorrow night. Well, this, this is kind of a bad time for me, Mr. Marshall. I, I'm working on several new accounts. Maybe in a week or so. Okay, Herb. Uh, and, uh, Herb, don't forget, if there's ever anything I can help you with, no matter what, I want you to come to me. Thanks, boss. What can you say to a guy who's as nice as that? How can you tell him that the reason you had to walk out on him was because the call was from your cell leader? How do you try to explain that the reason you can't go fishing with him or sleep at night or pay any attention to work is because your cell is working on something big right now? Uh, forget it, Philbrick. You're getting punchy. There are no explanations. I just got word, comrade. Our part of the project will be completed within 24 hours. Thank goodness. I can't take much more of this waiting around all night. What do you? We'll be notified what to do at the proper time. Do you know the importance of this project? Well, only that you've told me it's the biggest thing we ever worked on. Even that's a gross understatement. Have you heard of the Brighton Research Company? Heard the name. What about it? It's a deliberately innocuous misnomer from one of the most highly secret government plants in this area. They're engaged in finding peacetime uses for atomic energy. Wasn't that still pretty far off? To the contrary, comrade. We have information that they've already perfected such an invention. That's what we're after. 
You mean where to get the invention out of the plant? A model of it. Anything they produce, we can certainly use to our advantage. Imagine the propaganda effect on all the other nations if the communist world can announce it has perfected the first peacetime atomic invention. I, uh, I guess the orders for this operation must come from pretty high up, huh? We are responsible to the highest party officials. Oh? But it's so important that nothing go wrong. You'd better go now. But be where I can get in touch with you at a moment's notice. You've got my schedule. I'll always be either at home or at the office. <laughs> you know, this fragrance in here is oppressive to me. It gives me a headache. Fragrance? I guess you're not used to it. I find it rather delightful. It's for a funeral spray. Uh -huh. Very pretty. You've got news for the FBI, Philbrick. Get it to Henderson, quick. Brighton Research Company. Model of some kind of atomic invention. That's all I know. That's impossible. Man says nothing's impossible when it's for the party. And then even if they know about the invention, or they might even have a comrade working in the plant, there's no way that they could get anything out of there. That plant's guarded by the FBI and the Army. Well, we'll know by tomorrow. Comrade Howard's gonna call me the minute he knows it's out of the plant. That's when I'll call you. Okay. I told Howard I had a terrible headache. That's how I could come in here without suspicion. Now uh, you look worn out. Nerves are ragged. In other words? In other words, don't take any chances. This isn't going to be any sense for the party. There'll be danger involved, physical danger. I'll try and take care of myself. I'll see you. So long, Irv. Mr. Philbrick, your insurance agent called. Wants you to call him as soon as you can. All right. Get him on the phone. I'll take him to the office. Yes, sir. Okay, so this project of yours is dangerous. You've had to work on dangerous projects for the party before. But how does a guy know if this time his luck's run out? Yeah? He's on the phone. Who is? Your insurance agent. You told me to get him for you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Hello, Dave. Oh, fine. You can mail the policy to me. I'll be in touch with you. Say, Dave. Dave, I was just thinking, if I wanted an additional policy for the same amount of money, you could write it up right away, couldn't you? Yeah, yeah, I, I know I did, but I think I've changed my mind. Go ahead and write up an additional policy. Yeah. And, Dave, mail it to me at the office, will you? You know how Eva is about insurance. She... Well, she thinks I've got too much already. Thanks, Dave. What you really meant is that Eva knows you can't afford any more insurance right now. Where's the money for this new policy gonna come from? Come in. Well, Carl told me you were back. Do you have a few moments to go over the Walsh billboard account? Oh, sure. No, I think that this honeymooning in New York... Mr. Mr. Marshall... Yes, sir? You remember what we were talking about this morning? I mean, about coming to you if I ever needed anything? Well, I'm, uh, I'm in a bit of a spot. I, I need $850. Sure, Herb. I'll have the cashier make out a check for you. Now, about these billboards. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Marshall, I want to tell you something. Yes, Herb? I'm a... I just wanted to say thanks. Thanks very much. Now, let's see what we've got here. 
I like that theme, too, honeymooning in New York. Join experienced travelers. for the billboards, Herb. Forget that it's D-Day. Comrade Howard may not call for hours yet. Keep working. Maybe it'll help you forget that you're scared. Ready for breakfast yet, Herb? No, I'll wait and get something on the way to the office. You've hardly eaten anything all week. Are you sure you're feeling all right? Look, I'm just not hungry. All right, Herb. Uh, no. It's uh, probably for me anyway. Hello? Hello, Philbrick. Everything is set. I'll be by to pick you up in four minutes. Four minutes? Well, I can't be ready that soon. Then get ready. But be outside in exactly four minutes. What are you gonna do? There's no time to phone the FBI. You can't call from here, not while there's a chance that the party's got your phone tapped. But that means Henderson won't be able to follow you. Who is that, Herb? Uh, one of my accounts. They're picking me up. Yes, Herb, but it's always nice to hear you say it. I've been happier with you than I ever thought any man could be. I just wanted you to know that. You talk. You talk as if something's going to happen. <laughs> That's silly. Oh, would you do something for me? Call the office and tell them I won't be in today. Tell them, tell them I'm sick. But you said that uh, a man was picking you up on business. Well, it's a new account, and I'm not sure about him yet. I, I want to surprise the boss. Goodbye, darling. idea of coming back here. I thought you said everything was all set. Relax, Comrade Herb. Everything is all set. The material has left the plant. Well, then what are we waiting for? Why don't we go pick it up? We won't know how it got out or where it will be. Our comrade will have to get off his shift and phone me. When will that be? Another few minutes. Relax. If you could only get to a phone for just 30 seconds. There's no chance for Henderson to be following you. He's at the office waiting for your phone call. <sighs> Flower shop, yes? Yes, go ahead. I see. No, I have a man down here to pick it up. What's the car number? Yes. Yes, I have all the details. Mm-hmm. No, we won't fail at this end. Mm-hmm. Yes. What's the deal? Everything went off like clockwork. But the most difficult job is still ahead of us. Now, what's that? There's a spur line going into the plant. Our comrade in the plant has attached the model of the invention to the undercarriage of one of the freight cars. That particular car will be in the downtown freight yards this afternoon, attached to a load going west. How do we get to it? 
Our freight car will have a three-minute layover to allow an express train to go through. That's all the time you'll have to work with. Three minutes. What do you mean, I'll have? You're going to crawl under the train and get the box. Now, wait a minute. I, I, I don't know anything about trains. This is a job for a switchman. No, comrade. It calls for a devoted party member with courage and the youth and stamina which you possess. Shall we go? Hi. Well, wow. we tracked that communist down at the plant. We can't pick him up yet because of Philbrick. The comrades didn't know he tipped us off. You heard from him yet? I called his house. His wife said he left early this morning on business. He must have picked him up unexpectedly. He didn't even have time to call us. chance to get through to the FBI. Tell him you've got to make a phone call. I want to make a phone call to my office. All right, go ahead. He's too smart to let you make a call alone. Nothing you can do now. Hello, this is Mr. Philbrick. Would you give me Carol, please? Are you feeling any better? Well, Mr. Marshall's on his way to your house to visit you. He'll be there any minute. He's on his way to my house. Uh, all right, Carol, thanks. You're in a nice spot, Philbrick. What happens if the boss finds out you're not at home? You drive. Mr. Marshall. Hello, Eva. Thought I'd surprise the patient. How's he feeling? Good. He's, he's feeling all right, I, I think. Fine. I just want to tell him that he's starting on a paid vacation right now. May I go up and see him? Well, he's asleep right now, Mr. Marshall. I went up a few minutes ago, and he was sleeping like a baby. I, I don't like to disturb him. It's the first real rest he's had all week. Well, in that case, just let him rest. Oh, here. This is for him. And tell him for me not to worry. I will. Thank you, Mr. Marshall. Goodbye. Stop worrying, Herb. It's too late to worry about Henderson or anybody else. This is one time when you and the party are really in it together. The only way you can miss helping the party is by getting yourself killed. signing when the express comes along. That's the one we're to look for. Specifically car 2320, the ARO line. These trains are awful long. 30, 40 cars. As soon as we know which train is ours, we'll get down there. How much time do you say we'll have? Three minutes of sample time. Figure a minute and a half to find the car, then the quarter to fly the model loose, 15 seconds to get out from under. Even that's figuring high. I don't relish being under a freight train and having to count seconds. I'll take care of that. I'll time you. Thanks, I'll do my own timing. The way I figured, as soon as the express pulls out, that freight will get underway again. That's when I intend to be out from under the wheels. The party is counting on getting possession of that model, comrade. Yeah, yeah, you said that before. Here's our train, let's get out.
3-2-0, the ARO line. It's stopping. Two minutes left. Come on. Go ahead. I'll stall him. Here. You'll need this. Hurry up. Hurry it up, will you? How much time have you used up? How much time is left? If you get out without the box, you'll be through in the party. Come on, he's getting closer. Get the box, filter. As soon as this freight car do to leave. Leaving right now. to our final contact, and it's out of our hands. Okay, Phil, Rick, it's all over. You risked your life, and for what? For the party. So your name could be entered on the honor roll in Moscow. to the FBI. It's too late now. By the time you're able to contact them, the box will be on its way out of the country. Nice work, Henderson. You can relax now, Philbrick. You didn't need to reach him after all. his sight. And a comrade with a package won't get out of his sight either.
When the FBI pinpointed the freight car as the escape route for the stolen invention, they were able to track it down and thus keep valuable information out of the hands of the communists. Next week, we'll bring you another story from the files of Herbert A. Philbrick, citizen, communist, counter-spy.